All right, we're going to go ahead and uh, take this nut off here. I use a pretty good impact wrench to get it. Make sure you've got a good solid contact because you do not want to wring this nut off. So let's go ahead and blast it. There we go. All right, and then we're going to go ahead and work him off by hand once we got him broke loose. You've got one nut, and you've got a washer. We've already taken the uh, rubber O-ring off and set that to the side. We'll set these over here. All right, we're going to pull this bell off. That holds the bell on, which is what you see here. Okay, set him to the side. Then we're going to bring the whole clutch assembly off and the belt all at one time, like that. We're going to set the belt down. All right, here's our clutch assembly. Got a couple marks on there. The reason we put these marks, again, is so that we uh, get the nut tightened up to where it's supposed to be correctly. This is your actual clutch assembly. We're going to go ahead and blast this off, and I'm going to show you how to do that in just a minute, and uh, take it from there. All right, I use a uh, one and a half inch socket to fit that big old nut right there. We're going to go ahead and put that on our impact. We're going to go ahead and blast now. Blast very lightly on this. These are very fine threads on that nut. We don't want to break them. In addition, this is very spring loaded. So, what I do is I put my feet on each side of it, blast it, and then slowly let it off, as you're going to see here in just a minute. Just that much is all it takes, and you do the rest by hand. Now, notice I have not let off yet, because if you do, this thing's going to come shooting off. Nice and easy. Pull them off there. Okay. Now, if you were to be replacing the clutch arm springs as well, they are actually sitting in here. you got to take these snap rings off and pull them apart, replace them, and put it back together. We're not doing that because for the purpose of our buggy, um, that gives you one heck of a launch, but it's also impractical, impractical if you use the uh, the machine for just casual riding, because you got to rev pretty high if you put those anything bigger than the stock springs in there. We'll go ahead and set him off here. Okay, in the spring, um, it's got like a little retainer, if you will. Pull that out, like so. And set the old spring over here. I think those are thousand RPM somewhere around there. This prevents what that spring does. This main spring dictates when the buggy will start shifting into the higher speed ranges and what we're going to do is we're going to put a little white spring on here and typically these are yellow but they do come in different sizes what you want to make sure of is what it's rated at and this is a 1500 rpm spring um, so we're going to go ahead and set him back in there okay we've got our little re um, end piece if you will inserted into our new spring there's a groove in here that all this fits into make sure you get it seated well then you put a little pressure on it to get it to go, like that. Give it a good push, make sure it's on there. All right, now for putting this thing back together, it actually takes three people because you got to have one person to hold it down and compress it, another person to put the nut on, and in our case, one person to hold the camera. So we'll be right back. Okay, we're going to go ahead and uh, do this. It takes a couple people. We've got our spring in place here. We'll put our clutch assembly on. I'm going to hold it and compress it while my son actually puts the nut on, and then we'll take it from there. So, uh, make sure everything's centered here, and we'll give it a shot. Alright, go ahead. Keep going, as far as it'll go. Alright, and then we're lightly going to let off. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and switch hands here, and we'll continue. Okay, what I do from this point, after I've got the nut hand tightened, I just kind of put my feet on it, and I torque it as much with a ratchet as I possibly can to get it about where it's got to go. And you can see from the marks, um, we're not really that far off. I'll get it as far as I can with the ratchet. And then I'll take the impact wrench and I'll, I'll finish it. But what you have to be extremely careful on here, um, that nut will ring real easily. So I'm using an impact with several different levels of... Uh, strength to it and I put it on the lightest that I've got and I get those marks pretty well lined up which is what we're going to do now. And nice and easy. 
So we still got a little bit more to go. And that's awfully good right there. We're going to give it one little boost for good measure. Alright, and we're going to go ahead and roll with that right there. Um, that's where it was before. This is a pretty good impact wrench that I've got. I'm going to take it uh, for granted that, uh, in fact, I've got good marks on there. You can see they're lined up exactly where they were before. Um, if you have the proper torque wrench and you've got a way to hold it, you can certainly torque it to manufacture specs. This is the way we're going to do this one here. Um, now that we've got that in place, we're going to go ahead and put our belt back on here. And we're going to slide the assembly back onto the shaft. Okay. And it's got some teeth in there that it's got to bite onto. Make sure you got your belt where it's got to go. And that's where that's going to go. All right, we will finish that off by putting the belt on, or excuse me, the bell on. It goes in there like that. Okay, same thing, it mounts on the teeth that are in there. Then we've got our large washer, and we've got our, our nut. All right, and uh, we'll go ahead and tighten it up here in a second. Let me grab some tools. We'll be right back. Alright guys, and I use a strap wrench to hold this bell. This tool here is cheap and invaluable for working on buggies. And you can still see our marks up here and there. we got a little bit of ways to go on this. Um, again, you could torque this if you wanted and have the proper specs for it. We'll go ahead and tighten it up. Alright. And our marks are off just a little. Alright. Okay. And that's it for the for the rear side of it. Now we're going to go ahead and get the variator and continue on. Okay, we've got our variator assembly. Let's go ahead and move the, this stuff out of our way here. Put the belt down. Okay, we got our, our uh, slide here. There's our assembly. We're going to go ahead and put him on there. And try to hold the back on as you put, hold it, squeeze it together and pinch it and put everything on the assembly. That way that very back plate doesn't come riding off. Okay, there's half of our variator. Let's go ahead and put our belt on there. Alright, there we go. Have to ride it up there. Now we'll go ahead and get the front part of our variator assembly. And notice how it's splined as well. Let's stick him on there. And we've got a large washer, thick washer at that. And we've got our nut. We'll go ahead and put him on there. Try to get everything centered up as best we can. Now, as you start uh, tightening this up, it's actually going to collapse some. And uh, that's actually just simply the belt being put into position. And you'll feel like it's just threading on. You may be curious, you know, man, it seems like it's going a long way. It's just that the belt shifting in the proper position. You can use a ratchet on this just as easily. I'm not having to put a ton of force on this while I'm doing it. Okay, we're going to use our strap wrench and the ratchet to finish it off. Okay, we've got our strap wrench on and I'm using a breaker bar in this case. Be very careful that you've got a good solid bite with your strap wrench. This uh, variator sheave here can be extremely brittle. Just make sure you got a good bite and go ahead and uh, tighten it up. Alright, and we'll check our marks there. Actually, we need to go a little bit more to be ma matched up. Okay, we've got okay. everything tightened up. We don't want to forget to put our rubber O-ring back here where it belongs. Okay. Uh, something else I should know is we used uh, 12 gram sliders in here. They change the weights depending on what type of performance you're looking for. We do a lot of flat tracking on our racetrack. If you're doing a lot of hills and hilly terrain, you'll like to go with a lighter slider and possibly even a larger spring in the main side for the same purpose. So we're going to go ahead and put everything back together and we'll see you on one of the track attack videos. Thanks for watching.